Because you're too Here, short. That's good. There we go. Well, that's now good. I see I adjusted it down to get you. There we go. <laughs> so, good morning, YouTube refugees. Try that name out for this week. If you like that. Um, we thought we'd do something a little. S what? You just you keep going up and up. <laughs> good. We're having a fight over there where the camera <laughs> needs to be. Uh, my head is too high and her head's too low. Yeah, that's better to stand like that. <laughs> anyway, uh, we we were on the road for a week, which uh, we don't do a lot of maintenance on the motorhome when we're driving unless we break down, and we don't do a lot of cleaning or anything like that unless we have to. So anyway, we got here, we got halfway set up, and we immediately went to work because we're trying to get the campground ready to go. Um, it's just your short, your. You just keep well, I didn't see my head. Like, well, my arm's it. getting sore. There you go. Okay. Anyway, we thought we'd do something really interesting. You guys would uh, probably really enjoy. Today's kind of like clean the motorhome day, and also we do like dumping the tanks and stuff. And I'll show you kind of what uh, what I use and how I do things and how I dump my tank and some other things. I see people on uh, some of the forums talking about how. Their sink is plugged up and how this and you know is it working in that so anyway um, I'm gonna show you a couple of techniques that I have because believe me with our hair and stuff going down the sink and everything else there's a lot of maintenance to it when you live in them when you're camping in them and you're using them four or five times a year it takes you 15 years to get where your plumbing jams up when you're living in them it can happen anytime and all the time so Anyway, we're gonna turn the camera around. Dar's gonna film me, and I'm gonna go ahead and give this a whirl and show you a few things. So hang on, here we go. First thing to show you is, probably wondering why I have a five gallon bucket in the shower. The reason is, is I always keep a five gallon bucket around for a couple of reasons. One is I keep my hose for washing my motor home and some of my, my scrubbing equipment stuff always goes in the bucket. Just makes it real easy when I get ready to do the motor home. I just grab the bucket, take it outside, I have everything and then I get ready to wash the RV. When it comes to dump day, which today is dump day, I stick it in here and depending on the weather conditions like today, it's 55 degrees, so I don't really have hot water going in there, but I fill it, the bucket, and I filled it most of the way already, but I've just filled it with lukewarm water today. What I always do is every time I dump the black tank, I dump five gallons of water down there. And the reason is, especially when you're sitting still, when you've been doing when you've been doing a lot of traveling stuff sloshes around in there and there's a lot of things you can do to help loosen all that stuff up fortunately in this tank here i can see to the bottom so unfortunately in our tank or fortunately however you want to look at it i can see all the way to the bottom of my tank so i can see how disgusting it is down there but i the thing is is i used to dump the tank and i have a washout and I could always see that there was still a lot of remnants in the bottom of the tank. So what I do now is, is I dump that five gallon bucket of water. So let's go outside, let's get everything set up so that I can dump this thing and I'll show you how I do it. So, what I recommend is that if you know you're gonna dump today, then yesterday you should have closed your gray water tank to store up some water, extra, well, we call it liquid water, something you drink, you wouldn't drink that. Anyway, so you wanna store up some extra liquid to run it through the tank. Um, at this point, um, it's not a real big problem the way everything I have set up. But what I've done is, is I, and I'm gonna get some feedback on this, but trust me, I don't get any backwash on this. This is my my black water wash out here. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that on and then I'm going to dump my black tank. So now we'll go back inside and we're going to leave that running and we're going to go back inside we're going to do the five gallon bucket. Okay so we got the outside dumping and we got the rinse out running. Now I'm going to take a look down here 
and I can see yeah it's uh, it's washing it out but it's still nothing like it should be so that's when you got to know you can fill the water outside or however you want to do it the most important part is is to not wash the bathroom floor so here we go we're gonna dump this down we're gonna do it like as fast as we get that to go down And that goes in there and it takes all this, this stuff out of the corners and everything else that I can see right now. It's just clear water running down through there. It just took everything out before it looked like uh, Willy Wonka's little chocolate river. And now it's, it's nice and clean down in there. So we'll let it run for a few more minutes. And then what we'll do is we'll go out and shut it off. Um, one thing that I found, especially like I said with Darla and I, we have a lot of hair. So it's always a battle to keep these things from plugging up. Uh, the plumbing is a lot smaller on an RV than it is a home. So it, they tend to plug up a lot easier. So a little trick is, is you can go to uh, the dollar store, Walmarts, uh, RV stores. Most of them will have these little, uh, little uh, screens. And what I use to get the hair out, which Sometimes I have to do this a couple times a week, but it keeps that hair from going down the sink. Two other tools you should always have is a pair of needle nose pliers and one of these little hooky deals because sometimes they still do get down past there. Now I cleaned this out the other day, so it's pretty good. I usually have to do this maybe about once a month at the most since I've gotten these. Before that, I had to do it every week. Every week I was having to clean it out. But that's just a few days worth right there. So that's basically what you need to keep stuff from going down there. Now your your bathroom sink, it will plug up. Let's see, I think this one's just about to the point where I need to clean it. It usually drains off real quick. I saw the other day in a forum someone was saying that their sink wasn't draining in the bathroom, that they thought it was plugged up with hair. And everybody was telling them, put this chemical down and put that chemical down. I don't use chemicals. Let me show you what I do here. What you want to do is pull this. And right back here, behind the sink, there's a, like a big plastic nut. It's right here on the back side of this tube, the, the uh, drain tube. And you just unscrew that out. And there's like a little ball and a shaft. I make it look harder than it really is. Just pull that back and then you pull that out. And today we don't really have any hair. Let me get my flashlight and look down there. So you're probably noticing that a flashlight is a really critical thing to have in an RV. So I, like I say, I stay on top of this hair situation. Not that this would ever happen like uh, working at Sugar Beets and putting in a 14 hour day and being totally exhausted and coming home and Darla saying to me, the sink in the kitchen won't drain. And everything I tried didn't work. So I ended up going to the hardware store twice trying to get the thing. I finally got this little plunger and I'll show you that in a second. So this just slides back in. You see there's a little hole right there? <laughs> Can you see it? Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna slide that back down. You wanna keep that? Pull this thing back, insert. Okay, oops, turn the light off. And then that screws back in. And you should, once that's tightened up, should be good to go. But that tends to be where all the hair catches, is down there on that little deal. So, there we go. So that's good to go now. People may want to know what that is. What that is? Right there. What? Next to the toilet paper. Oh. This is, uh, when I get up in the middle of the night, which I'm one of those guys with the, the old prostate, when I get up in the middle of the night to use the bathroom, and it's real dark in here, I can just turn this on real low, and it works great. It's on a dimmer so I can make it brighter or not so bright. And it's aimed away from the bedroom so it doesn't disturb Darla. Flashlight, toothbrush, 
pair of pliers and a hooky deal. Another thing that I suggest that I just recently found that is amazing for cleaning your seal and just keeping that toilet awesome because this is a this is a high-end toilet toilet it's a sealant it's a ceramic it's not a plastic toilet Plast, uh, the, the plastic toilets don't seem to get the same type of uh, buildup in them yep. but they do get their own type of uh, buildup um, I've started using CLR on all this and I'm telling you it makes that seal work better it gets rid of all the grunge and the nasty works really well um, plus another thing I'll show you this over here I use this also. This is soft scrub and it's OxyClean. It is, we've talked about before, I am the housekeeper. So I do the cleaning today. The motorhome is gonna get like carpet scrubbed and everything. So this OxyClean works really good for cleaning your shower and um, cleaning the toilet. The CLR works great for like getting rid of all what, what causes those seals in the toilets to quit working is they get like a buildup in them and if you're down like in Arizona and those areas you get that nasty water down there even though we run three filters on this the water still is not a hundred percent it's probably ninety percent but it's not a hundred percent so CLR breaks all that stuff loose and gets rid of it here's another one of these baskets in here So what happened when we were at Sugar Beets, I mean, this thing was full of water and it would drain down in what a half an hour, but I just couldn't. And I, I knew there was something and there's a line, everything, the gray and the black, the black, gray, and the freshwater tanks are right under here and they go all, all the way across the motor home. And there's an access panel outside that you can take off, but they're all insul in an insulated uh, area and it's heated off the main heater so if you're if you're in below say 35 degrees always leave your heater on at 40 or 50 degrees whatever the lowest setting is when you're gone so that those get fed some heat so they don't freeze up your black tank is always uh, creating heat because it's decomposing so um, that one tends to not freeze so easy but it can and remember never leave your black drain open so I, I already I already shut off the outside. Never leave your black dray open. If you do, you'll find that you're building mountains and the river doesn't wash it away. So, and you can really get in trouble real fast that way. So you always wanna keep your black tank closed until it comes time to dump it. Um, don't go uh, doing number one out in the woods because it requires liquids in there for two reasons. One, to help wash it out and the other is is so that the liquid maintains above the solids, that's when you get a lot of smells. Is when the, you should always start off, I'll, I'll put probably about three gallons of water in there. Um, I've actually been doing a little test. I haven't been putting chemicals in the tank because it seems like the chemical smell would be worse than the other smells. The only time you really take a chance on getting smells into the RV is when you have your your uh, fantastic fans on and no windows open and you crack that it will vent right through that the septic system it goes right down the vent tube and right into your rv so you always want to make sure you have a window open when you crack that tank but uh yeah you want to you always want to make sure that you keep liquid but I, we were using chemicals and it just didn't seem like it was doing that much and so i haven't been using them for about three weeks now and I just asked Arla a few minutes ago. I didn't tell her, and she said, I haven't noticed any difference. So Maybe it's different when it's hot, it hotter It might be different when summer. it's hotter. Um, it was actually pretty warm over there in Little Rock and down there in Arkansas. But we'll see. We'll see if it starts stinking or definitely. Well, we've got chemicals to put in there. Um, there's a lot of people do different things. I'm just trying to try some different things that uh, I think is good. I'll tell you another another situation too is is there's the the question of RV toilet paper or house toilet paper. So RV toilet paper is more expensive than gold, um, and if you use two ply house toilet paper, it goes down and goes like this in the bottom of your tank, and it just sucks down. It doesn't want to move. So what we use is Scott Tell single ply. Um, the ladies don't like it as well. They like the big, soft, poofy pillows. The RV toilet paper does that. It dissolves. 
Um, what I found with the RV toilet paper though is, is it seems to dissolve before I'm done doing my business. So I like the Scott uh, towels and the price difference, Darla and I have decided it's worth using the single ply Scott towels as opposed to paying the extra money and having the dissolvable toilet paper, which you, you get like just four at a time and we get a big, huge, gigantic thing for the price of those. So I think I'm done with the toilet talk. Um, here's another tool. Got to have one of these. And of course this unscrews off, but you know, you can't, you, you want a short one for inside an RV. What I ended up doing that day is... Can, can I also say this is just for the sink in here, not for the toilet yeah, and well, the sink? Yeah, well, you don't, you will never use this in, a, in an RV toilet right. because there's no, uh, there's no trap in an RV mm -hmm. toilet. If, if, if you have a toilet where you look down and you can't see if it goes like this and it goes to the side, it's just, it's just plumbing going over to the tank. Um, there is no trap in there. Um, that's the thing with all, all the sinks have traps where it comes down and it goes up and then it goes into your tanks. That's the wonder of plumbing. That's what prevents the smell from coming back up in the sinks. Um, on the toilets, they don't do that. That's why you have to, if your toilet isn't holding water, if your seal is not holding water, then you're going to get smells inside your RV because that's what prevents the smells from coming in. And when you open that trap, you release an exhaust from the toilet into your RV. You're always going to get a little bit of it. Um, it tends to get more when you have the uh, fantastic vent open. But one of the things about it is, is if you're in there doing your business, um, you're going to want that open. You want to make sure you have a window, like we keep a window out here open. We have the fantastic vent open. You want to keep your, the door going in there cracked so that air can get in. Or you can open a window in the bedroom and do the same thing. But you want it to be able to get a good, you know, get the, the air displaced in that area. It's kind of a, a little bit of a tough conversation to have, but when you're living together, it's just called consideration. You, you know, I mean, everybody does think, some people think they don't, but everybody does to other people. So this is just a nice way of saying, you know, be courteous. You're going to be living in small quarters, and you, you, this is one of the things that makes it better. So anyway, the way we got this unplugged that time was is I finally I went over and I bought one of these and I came back and I, I gave it about three really hard pumps. I, I filled this up with water so the water was way up high and I lifted this up and I gave it a hard pluck and I lifted it up and I gave it and I kept pumping the water through and all of a sudden just went whoa. And every once in a while she'll tell me, oh, it's starting to slow down a little bit. So that's the process. That's how we do it. And like I say, she cleans this. We, dump, we both dump this out all the time. That's probably just from today for breakfast. So these things you, you, another thing is that I do is because it's easy for me to get to the, my tanks, there's vents that go, there's a roof vent and there's hoses that go to that roof vent. And all I do is I'll pull that roof vent hose off my tank, my gray tank, the black tank I don't have to worry about because I showed you how I keep that clean. But I'll go in there, I have a high pressure nozzle and I'll squirt inside of that gray tank and I'll just keep working it, working it. And you can see all kinds of sludge and nasty going out the other side. And you should do that maybe once a year. Um, it's probably been two years since I've done it. I'll probably do it here, but I've been working on other things. So that's a good thing to do. If you go down to Quartzsite, there's guys that have come by. I think they charge like 40 bucks and they clean your black and your gray tanks out. Good thing to do get, get, because you start, you'll start noticing that if you're not using the five gallon bucket of water, that was one of the things I noticed is we went from seven days capacity down to six days capacity down to five days capacity. It seemed like every day, every couple of weeks, it was getting a day shorter. And what it was is all the solids were building up in the corners and that little spray nozzle doesn't get it all. So by using the five gallon bucket, that loosens things up and gets things rolling. Another thing that we do is, is a lot of times when we take off to travel, We'll squirt a, a good uh, shot of uh, Dawn dishwashing liquid in the black tank. And if you've already just dumped your tank and everything, you put that Dawn dishwashing liquid, get you a big bag of ice, break it loose, and dump that down the toilet. Some people say that doesn't work. 
It doesn't work if there's solids in there, but if there's nothing in there other than what's in that tank and you dump that ice down in there, it will go in there and it will shift around as you're driving and that Dawn dishwashing liquid, it will actually agitate. But you gotta make sure when you put that ice in there, you hit the road. Because it starts, the time, the clock starts ticking and the ice starts melting. So you wanna get it to shake it around there as much as possible and it will loosen a lot of that stuff up and then the next time you dump, boom, away it goes. So I think, I think that's kind of a, a quick little lesson on uh, plumbing. Um, it's one of those fun subjects everybody loves to talk about, but I'll tell you what, um, if you ever talk to somebody that's had problems with their plumbing or their RV, it's really, really an inconvenient thing. So I want to thank everybody for watching. Uh, I would like for everybody, if you would, if, if you'd like to subscribe, you like our videos, and we are going to do more of these type of videos because we're not going to be traveling for the next four and a half months. So I'm going to be showing you some of my stuff and techniques. Please subscribe. Please uh, give us a thumbs up if you like the video. And hit the bell if you like notifications. We thank you all for watching. You are our family, and we really look forward to your comments. I read all your comments and try to respond to them in some way. And uh, so if you would, Please do that. If you have any questions, if you have any questions about what I told you today or anything, feel free to write a comment about that and I will get back with you. So thank you. Have a great day. Bye. Oh, and Darla says bye. <laughs> bye.